We are in the midst of one of the worst hunger crises in 40 years. 811 million people around the world are going hungry every night. Today, I'm chatting with T. Van Wong, the United Church Program Coordinator for Sustainable Development and Humanitarian Response, about how your generosity helps our United Church to respond to emergencies, including the current hunger crisis. T. Van, I'm really glad to be with you today. Thanks, Alexa. I'm really happy to be here today, too. Well, thank you. I'm wondering if we might be able to talk about global emergencies in terms of the three C's. Uh, we talk about COVID, we talk about climate change, we talk about conflict. And, and I'm wondering what worries you the most about those three and the way they intersect with global emergencies. With climate change, we're seeing increases of drought, floods, and severe storms that have destroyed crops and agricultural land. The frequency and severity, as well as its unpredictability, means that it's increasingly difficult for people to recover from successive natural disasters um, that come one after the other, as we see in the Philippines or in uh, Latin America and the Caribbean. It also exacerbates and intensifies like already precarious situations. Uh, mm -hmm. For example, millions of people are currently facing famine in countries such as uh, Yemen and Ethiopia that have been experiencing extreme weather patterns, uh, including prolonged drought and or flooding amidst the conflict um, going on in the countries. Um, climate change and conflict um, also leads to mass displacements of people uh, without food or a source of livelihood. Many people are forced to leave their homes in search of work, food, or safety for themselves or their families. Um, in spaces where climate change action is being discussed, you may hear a lot that people who contribute the least to greenhouse gases are often yeah. the most impacted by climate change. Uh, mm -hmm. We are seeing this lived out um, by smallholder farmers in Kenya and Zimbabwe. Seasonal rains that they used to be able to count on to come um, on the day, um, maybe even to the hour, now come too soon, too late, not enough, or not at all. Um, so this has led to a significant impact for farmers who largely rely on rain-fed agriculture. The impact of climate shocks on global um, food um, and food security um, impacts the, the food availability in the countries, uh, contributing to rising food prices as well. There's a lot going on um, globally. and. It, sometimes I think it can feel really hard to be sort of a, a single person or a family trying to to navigate uh, the complexities. What would you say would be the the one or two things that we could do in our own lives to inspire change? Yeah, um, I think people can make a big impact by understanding what drives a hunger locally and globally. Uh, we've talked about some of the global food challenges that the three C's or four C's, uh, but here in Canada, food insecurity is really a, a social justice issue. There yeah. is availability of food in the markets, but uh, issues such as racism and discrimination, lack of affordable housing, precarious employment, uh, or inadequate social safety nets uh, and economic disruptions mean many people in Canada are food insecure. Um, I think to inspire real change, I encourage people to get involved by advocating to all levels of their government to increase minimum wage and have a plan uh, for a livable income, increase social assistance so that people can get out of the cycle of poverty, uh, structural poverty, and urge them to put in place a long-term plan um, and concrete action for affordable housing. Uh, on a global level, you know, keep urging the Canadian government to meet its climate commitments and to provide resources and support to countries in the global majority um, to adapt to climate change because they are the ones who are most impacted. I, I noticed that you were you were speaking about some of the ways that uh, race and affordable housing also impacts issues of hunger here in Canada. Um, there's a lot of intersecting issues that can uh, impact a global emergency. Are there other ones that we should be aware of? Yeah, um, so we've talked about some of the, the major intersections, but 
uh, for many of us in Canada, the way we interact with food has changed. Our connection to food and how it is grown and harvested uh, is very distant from us. Um, mm -hmm. Food that we buy in grocery stores and markets are now transported from places like the US, Mexico, Russia, or China. Um, so growing food has become optimized for efficiency and profit. Um, but in the process, the system has also become more fragile. Um, so it is interrelated and connected in ways that never used to be. Um, so the, the impact of three C's that we mentioned has put a break in food security for many people, um, right. as evidenced by the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. The global hunger crisis is not a new emergency, but years of inaction, the effects of climate change, COVID-19 pandemic and conflict means that food insecurity has really reached crisis or catastrophic levels uh, for millions of people. The Ukraine and Russia are two of the world's largest producers and exporters of staple crops, uh, sunflower oils and inputs such as uh, fertilizers, um, like nitrogen and potash. Um, and this war has led to global price increases on food and fuel impacting countries in the Middle East, Africa, South Asia, North America, and other countries who rely on, on these food and inputs. Um, I think this highlights just how much food production has been centralized and controlled um, and has far-reaching impacts uh, for those who rely on them. Um, Another intersection is gender equality. Uh, we cannot achieve food security without gender equality. Uh, women play an important role in food production and are also responsible for the household's nutrition. So when women have a role in food production um, and decision-making, um, households and communities become healthier and more food secure. There's a lot to think about when we, when we talk about um food security issues and you, you mentioned the war in Ukraine and um, the other intersecting factors. What do you think people really need to know when they're thinking about food security issues? Yeah, um, I think people really need to know that we won't reach food security without addressing the root causes of food insecurity. Um, mm -hmm. It's not sustainable to keep responding to humanitarian crises, especially as they are becoming um, protracted, more complex, um, and becoming more frequent. All people have a right to live with dignity, uh, mm -hmm. which is why we need to live out the principles of food sovereignty. Um, food sovereignty centers on the idea that people need to have the power of decision making in the food system by rebuilding relationships between people and the land and between producers mm -hmm. and consumers. Um, there are variations on the definition of food sovereignty, uh, but the one most mm -hmm. commonly used comes from uh, La Via Campesina, an international movement of small scale farmers who speaks of food sovereignty as the right of peoples to healthy and culturally appropriate food produced through ecologically sound and sustainable methods, and the right to define their own food and agriculture systems. Um, food sovereignty recognizes the values and wisdom of indigenous agriculture systems and traditional mm -hmm. knowledge in food production built up over thousands of years, uh, bringing back food to the local level caring for the land and creation can begin to address some of the root causes of food insecurity. When we talk about um, food sovereignty being really uh, at, at the heart of how we can end global emergencies in terms of food emergencies, how can we help with those longer term rebuilding efforts? The global industrialization of food has has definitely contributed to food insecurity. Uh, so, you know, this is where uh, linking it to food sovereignty, bringing food to the yeah. local level, culturally appropriate food, and having people um, make the decision on their own food and, and food systems is important. Can you tell me how Mission and Service and our emergency response efforts have been helping both uh, here in Canada and around the world? 
So Mission and Service is supporting global partners in their response to food insecurity in their communities. Uh, when, a, when a hurricane hits Cuba or the super typhoon hits the Philippines, partners mobilize quickly to respond in the communities with food, hygiene kits, psychosocial support, and shelter. So partners are best placed to respond uh, to and understand the needs of the community the best. Mm -hmm. um, so this not quite emergency response, but through mission and service as well, and through our membership with the Canadian Food Grains Bank and the Manitoba Council for International Cooperation, partners are doing the long-term work to address uh, food insecurity and hunger in their communities. Uh, for example, through conservation agriculture and agroecology. Uh, the National Council of Churches of Kenya are providing um, conservation agriculture trainings to smallholder farmers, particularly women farmers, and connecting them to more experienced um, women farmers that provides mentorship and support. They are also linking farmers to markets so that they can sell what they grow at a fair price. Mm -hmm. The impact of that is that farmers can uh, earn income to support their children's education and other household needs and improve their family's nutrition. Another project uh, that is from the Santa Marta Association for Economic and Social Development, uh, they have a, a school farm called the Dora, Dora, Dora Alicia School Farm uh, that trains smallholder farmers, particularly women in rural cabanas in El Salvador, to grow food sustainably without harming the mm -hmm. surrounding environment. Um, they're providing small plots of land to farmers to learn about agroecology um, and providing information about gender equality, climate justice, and human rights. Um, Long-term projects focusing on food sovereignty and food security also has the effect of increasing women's empowerment and leadership in the communities. I can see, and I saw in your answer there, the way that, um, again, those intersecting pieces of of gender and food sovereignty and um, are all coming, you know, in, into play in this. Um, what calls you to the work that you do? Um, this this is a more personal question, but um, my mom, dad, and I um, were refugees that came to Canada through uh, the refugee sponsorship program following the war in Vietnam. Um, when I think of the work that I do, I, I think of my parents who found um, courage to escape in a small boat, um, to traveling through the South China Sea from Vietnam to China uh, to seek out a better life for me and my my future siblings. Um, so the work of global partners to create conditions where people can live whole and dignified lives, make choices freely and who aren't forced um, maybe who aren't forced to leave their home um, really resonates with me. Tita, and it sounds like your own story illustrates just how vital mission service support is when it can reach a family and support them where they are uh, through the partners that we have. Um, I wonder if there is a, a story uh, that you want to share about a community that you've seen succeed through the work of mission and service and the partners that we work with. We recently received a story from uh, a farmer named Raymond in Zimbabwe, where we're, where UCC, uh, where United Church is partnering with the Zimbabwe Council of Churches on a, a food grains bank project um, that addresses um, humanitarian response and development in one program. Uh, the this farmer uh, Raymond who has has spoken about how conservation agriculture has has really changed his life and his family's life and his community's life uh, commute the way the community interacts uh, so now um, you know they're able to farm in a timely manner um, because of conservation agriculture they're able to rehabilitate community assets so that um, they're able to you know prevent erosion of, of farmlands, um, create, um, try to keep water in their wells or, or in rivers so that they don't quickly evaporate. Um, and also how uh, through with um, Zimbabwe Council of Churches, they've been able to 
um, address gender-based violence within their communities. So um, issues such as early child marriages are prevented. So because of food um, security, people are able to farm, able to earn income um, so that they don't have to send their girl children for early marriages because they can't afford to feed them anymore. That's a significant impact that uh, that folks over here can help by uh, by donating through mission and service. I'm um, amazed at how when we all pull together in one part of the world, we can affect change um, globally. I wonder if there's anything else that you would want our, our donors to know about the work or anything that has surprised you over the years? Not so much surprise, but just how um, really I'm humbled and inspired by the work of global partners. Um, when humanitarian crisis hit, you know, I, I'm sitting here in Canada, but partners are also experiencing um, the same emergencies. So I think being able to to support them um, in their work has been really, yeah, really great. Your gift for mission and service will help address both the immediate and long-term emergency response efforts. <laughs>